Hello and welcome everybody. <laughs> um, so this will be the release stream for 3.11. Um, yeah, so I decided to actually do a Euro-friendly stream for the first time. And uh, in response, Andrea let me know that they forgot to announce that they were doing their PF2E, um, well, I guess, second one shot of Abomination Vaults. So I promise We'll keep this one quick so everyone can get back. But uh, a couple cool things that are coming out. This wasn't a big release cycle for us uh, between PaizoCon and then the switch from GitLab to GitHub. Um, a lot of this was focused on minor stability things or just making sure that we got everything to where we need it to be. Uh, I've already talked to a bunch of the dev team. Lots more fun, shiny stuff is coming in the next release because we're ready to start blowing things up back up again now that we've figured out the whole GitHub thing. Uh, but before we get onto that, why don't I show you all the cool stuff? Um, so let's start by pulling out a couple of actors here. Um, so I've just created a random uh, empty character as well as one of the wonderful creatures uh, from the uh, the Battle Zoo Bestiary. Uh, so first thing that we've added into the system, don't you hate it when something moves over top and you want to select your, uh, your token? Well, now you can. Just hover over and press the Z key or Z key for everyone in the US, um, and that will automatically built into the system, uh, change which tokens on top. So it's now much easier to select. I need to remember this for this this for my games because I ran a whole bunch with Bloodseekers and it was a pain in the neck and I forgot that I could just hit Z. So there you go. That's uh, the first cool thing that we have. Uh, next, one of the big things that we added on and I don't think that we've demonstrated is for spellcasters. So I'm going to take my, uh, my random character here and I've added in uh, prepared spellcasting. So what we've done now is if you open up the spellbook, you can literally uh, have a spell book. So if I want to select my first level cantrips and give them Acid Splash and Chill Touch, uh, Days, Tech Magic, Electric Arc, I can prepare a whole bunch of spells. Let's say Light, um, you know, Mage Hand, Prestidigit Prestidigitation, and then I can decide which ones I want to slot at the start of the day and just pull them in from the spell book so it keeps things less cluttered. Uh, you can do the same with the different leveled spells. The nice thing about this is, so when I add in uh, my spells, so let's say I've got a first level spell and I want to put heal, um, and we want to heighten that. Uh, it's been a pain because before you, you, you used to have to drag it all the way up. Um, now, however, I want to make a 10th level heal spell, I can just drag it from there into my 10th level slot. And it'll automatically heighten. So no more having it in first level, dragging through 80 different spells to try and drop it into 10th level. Uh, so that's kind of a cool, fun one that we've got. It's a, it, it makes things a lot easier to use. Uh, so one of the other things that we've added Um, let's put this dagger on. So daggers have thrown. Well, now we have thrown traits. Uh, so if you have a weapon that is thrown, you'll now get a second set of uh, attack options, uh, similar to what we had for um, um, for combination weapons, but now it works for thrown. Uh, I don't know if this has made it in yet, because I just built, and I haven't actually checked this, but uh, the dagger pistol, no, it doesn't have it yet, but... Uh, what we will have is that it will also have the, the throne trait because the dagger pistol is kind of unique. Um, we now have a block for melee usage and it does have the throne trait. Uh, we're still working out on the back end how to make this work, but Sharks already posted something I quickly built before the stream to see if it was in yet, but it's not merged in yet. Uh, maybe for this release, we'll be able to sneak it in. Definitely looking at some UI stuff going in the future. So it might not stay permanently like that, but for something like a dagger pistol where it gets ridiculous, you'll have three different lines. Uh, one for doing the melee attack, one for doing the rifle attack, which is the normal one, uh, with the weapons, and then one for doing the returning strike. So that's kind of cool. Uh, for those of you who are interested in role syntax, there is some new role syntax in. I'm not going to demonstrate it, uh, but it does allow us to do cool things and cool operators. So what we're looking at being able to do is, um, for, for instance, we now have an operator that we can plug in, and it'll start to be able to generate um, things like... Um, slot progressions for for different uh, for different spellcasters. Um, so for instance, one of the new things we'll be able to do is generate the divine font. 
So we're putting in the back end to that. This isn't in. Um, we're not generating slots already, nothing like that. But we're looking at, uh, at moving in that direction. So the, the background for that has been added in. Uh, so here I've chosen the Black Rose Museum. And so why don't we say we'll make a Black Rose Museum item. Obviously, this is going to be a hazard. Uh, so we have a brand new hazard. I'll just drag it on. Well, we now have a new sheet for hazards, which is kind of cool. We can switch over to our beta sheet, which we're sort of trialing, and it looks like this. It's it's much nicer. You can unlock. So right here you see um, if I give it zero hit points, because there's lots that don't and no AC, uh, when I lock it up, it doesn't have any defenses. Um, or, you know, it's got a reflex and a will save. Um, or sorry, a reflex and a fortitude save, but no will save because it's mindless. So I plug those in, and there we go. Only the saves that are necessary come up. Uh, same sort of normal stuff, so we can put in the, the DC, the description, uh, the routine, but anything that's not there just disappears, so it's a much cleaner sheet. Uh, this is a work in progress. You're, you're welcome to play with it, try it out. I've been using it for data entry. It's, uh, it's pretty handy. Uh, another cool one, something people have been asking for. Uh, first, if you look, this uh, character here, it can cast spells, so the spell area is, is black. Um, it doesn't have any effects on it. So the effects is now um, grayed out. Inventory is also grayed out. But hey, you'll notice we can now do containers. So what if this uh, character has a sack? Or we'll say, there we are, sack. Um, so now I have a sack, and it's a container. So I can put uh, a healing potion in it. And voila, so it's like that. Uh, what I will warn you is at this point, you can't take the sack and drag it to another actor. It won't work. But the fact that we can now do this is is a step forward. So something people have been asking for, uh, we can now properly put containers on NPCs. It doesn't loop quite correctly. If you're going to go and loot it, you have to pull the healing potion out and then move the sack. But uh, that's just something we'll have to work around in time. Um, and then the last one that I want to demonstrate for today. So assurance. Let's give this guy Assurance and Medicine, because that's pretty much the most common one. So here's my Medicine roll. If I was just to roll a normal roll, um, you'll see it pops up, Charisma, Untrained. Um, but for Medicine, oops, I can turn on Assurance. So here we've got the normal roll, or I can just use Assurance, roll, and it'll automatically do that. Fortune Traits plugged in, just give me a flat 10 plus 3. So Assurance now built into the system. Uh, again, you'll have to get it from the pop-up menu, uh, and, but you can just toggle it on and it'll turn off all the modifiers that don't belong working with Assurance. So that's a fun one that's built in for anyone who likes to use that. Uh, I guess we will do one last demo. So here we have Two Strike. And I'll put that on our character. So he will cast True Strike. There is now an effect for True Strike. I can put that on my actor. Um, he can target this guy. We have our dagger, which I guess we can throw. Oh, shoot, it's not in combat, so that won't work. If we start a combat, now put on true strike and it won't be expired. Well, they're not expired. Uh, target this guy, I'll go out strike. It takes the true strike off, rolls twice for you, keep highest. And so there we go. Um, other than that, one thing that I wasn't able to get prepped for this stream, because I forgot, we do have a cool thing that uh, has been announced. So Battle Do Beast Um uh, huge fan of everything that they've done. And now they have something that's a little bit of a bonus for us. I don't know if this will work. Oh, there we go. Um, so, coming out this July, uh, will be BattleZoo Ancestries. A Kickstarter will be starting. Uh, uh, in this Kickstarter, uh, they'll be doing one a month, a brand new Ancestry for Pathfinder 2nd Edition uh, and for 5e. And as a bonus, because of how successful their last Kickstarter was, they'll be re releasing the PDF one a month. The book will come at the end of the Kickstarter, but same day, they will be releasing, um, they'll have a module for Foundry, and it will just be one module, but it'll be continually updated. So once a month, the next Ancestry will go in. You update it, it is there, it is uh, it is built in, you can start playing with it right away. 
Um, this will only be available on Foundry. Uh, so we, we can call it kind of a, a Foundry PF2E exclusive in that uh, for VTTs, it will just be part of it. And this isn't a bonus tier. This is nothing else because of how many people purchased it, uh, purchased uh, everything for all the other Battlezoo products. It's literally just going to be part of the Kickstarter. You get this for free as part of it. So very, very cool news. This sort of just happened and this is the first time it's being announced. Um, that is all I have for all of you. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things we have planned, but seeing as um, we're, we want to get back to the uh, Foundry uh, playthrough of Abomination Vaults, which hopefully you're all enjoying, um, I'll take a question or two quickly and while well, I'm trying to figure out the raid command, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So thank you all for watching the stream. Well, we'll see if I did this right. Uh, thank you so much for paying attention and enjoy Abomination Vaults. And we'll see you for what will likely be a much longer stream for 3.12.